One of the, one of the, the new things that's in our family's uh, schedule now is, is Pee Wee football and cheer. Now I know there's a lot of things about football, and especially with my injury, I've got a lot of criticism saying, how could you be paralyzed on the football field but allow your son to play football? But here's the truth, I would, go, I would not change a thing. I would not change a thing. I'd go back, I would play football again, even knowing that I was probably gonna be paralyzed again. I think it was one of the, the best things that happened for me. Do I want that to happen to my son? Absolutely not. Do I think it's going to happen to my son? No, of course, or else I wouldn't put him in the game. And, you know, football is, it, it, it's a sport that has injury. There's no question about it. There's a risk to it. But with things that come with risk, there, there comes rewards. And, and the kids, especially in his case, he loves the sport. He is, I'm not pushing him to play football. He loves to go play football. He loves to be part of a team. And I like what I'm seeing with him. And even the other kids on the team, because I'm coaching this year, is that the kids come in with a certain expectation, whether they don't think they can play a position, whether they don't think they're fast enough, strong enough, uh, whether they might be scared to, to go and, and contact somebody else. By the second or third week, you've, you've literally seen these kids overcome that challenge. And they grow from that. And I think that's a trade-off I'm willing to take, uh, especially for my, for my son, to watch his progression of growth with it, and his confidence come up and his ability to interact with other teams uh, or other players on the team. And he knows that he has to depend on his other teammates. And now what's happening, the kids are undefeated, so I'll give them a little plug. They're 8-0, undefeated. They're going to the playoffs. They're possibly going to the Pee Wee Super Bowl. But these kids, they may have started out here with their expectations. But every kid on this team now, their expectations up here, they expect to win. They come to, uh, they, they come to practice to work. They come on time. They come with a level of pride in what they're doing. And they know that to be on this team, you need to be playing at a certain level. And it's happening with all the kids. It's happened with kids who are in their first year. So to me, that's, that's one of the best things I've seen as far as building leadership and, and skills as far as working in a team environment for the kids. And my daughter's doing cheerleading, and the same thing's happened with her. You get a cheer squad with, with 25 girls who are between the ages of 8 to 10. That's like herding cats. That, 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 that's, that's a tough group to keep together. But they're disciplined. There's a schedule. They work hard. And then they get the rewards from it. They get the rewards. And it's something It's not just given to them. It's not like they've won a seventh place ribbon just for showing up, they work hard and they, they get a reward for it. And I think that kind of translates over into some of the messages that we want to get across to our kids as far as if you want to get something out of life, you're going to have to earn it. And it's going to require discipline, it's going to require focus, it's going to require some passion and a skill set. And th these are sports that just happen to fit the skill sets of my kids and their passion. So it doesn't have to be football, it doesn't have to be cheer, it could be the flute, it could be playing uh, play ping pong, it can be drawing, it can be whatever it is the child has passion for and develops a skill set and can actually see themselves getting better by the more work they do. That builds leadership, that builds character, that builds confidence. So my first tip that I always say to myself and to, my, uh, to, to anybody who I'm doing a workshop in front of is, is whether it's your child or it's your spouse, you can never withhold love. One of the tools that we have as a parent is that we know how much your children want our love from them. And even as children, that's what we wanted from our parents was their love. And when you teach children that they have to perform to receive your love, then you're teaching your child that that love is conditional. And that causes, that causes other issues as they grow up. We don't want them to take that, there's, that there, um, there are things they have to do to receive your love. Now, there's things that they, they can do where I'm not going to be happy about, but it, it doesn't mean I will ever stop loving them. So number one is that, is never withhold the love. The second one that I really like to make sure that everybody's doing, uh, at least with or the second tip that I really think is important for parents to remember is that you need to be actively involved. Like in our case, we, can't, we don't feel comfortable just sending our children to school, let the teachers check the homework, never take a look at that stuff, not know who their friends are. We need to be actively involved. If you want to know what your child is going to grow up to be like, take a look at the three or four friends that he's hanging around with. That's going to give you a pretty good indication. Here's the most important one, at least it works for my son, and even my daughter for that matter, is that we want to be firm, but we want to be fair. And then with the decisions that we make, like if I'd make a decision that he can't be on the computer uh, or he can't watch a certain movie, I, I don't believe in just the tough love. Nope, don't do it because I told you not to do it. I think that, that, that creates a, uh, a lack of communication between two people. So it's important for us to make sure that they understand the reason why we've actually made the decision that we have. And also it helps him develop a mindset and a thought process to actually mature into. Instead of me saying no to something and then him imagining what is it that I'm saying no about, Whatever he decides that reason is will be the thought process that he picks up that he may use down the road. So it's important to make sure that, that we explain our reasoning to them.